Welcome to another episode of the Spoon Mob Podcast. This week is a little bit different of an episode, so it's a cross kind of between a mini update episode, but also our standard kind of interview styled format episode. We have three guests on all at the same time simultaneously. So the first time we've ever done this. So we've had two people on uh, along with myself, but this time we actually have three and myself. So four different people all on kind of one podcast here. And that's because it's the Bincho Boys. And if you're not familiar with the Bincho Boys, it is a pop-up founded by Raymond Kim, who is the chef owner of Coso, which is inside the East Market here in Columbus, Ohio. Chef Jake Clevin, formerly of Cleaver, but of the soon-to-reopen downtown spec Italian eatery, and Chef Matt Hagens, who's the owner and founder, executive chef of Preston's, a burger joint, Honey's Fried Chicken, both of which you can find in the North Market downtown here in Columbus. He's also one of the co-founders of Service Relief Kitchen, which is a charity organization that raises money. Started kind of in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, They raise money for restaurant workers that had lost their jobs, uh, either due to being laid off from a corporate restaurant or restaurant closing altogether, what have you. During the COVID pandemic, he's also the co-founder of Cafe Overlook, which is on the 16th floor of the Franklin County Courthouse building. So it's kind of a cafe, cafeteria style, a bunch of different menu options you can order in advance. You can go there even if you're not in court that day or in jury duty or anything like that. You just have to go through the security checkpoint. It's really not that hard. And he's also the chef and founder of and friends which is his own separate pop-up that he started uh, where he's doing collaboration dinners with different chefs from the columbus area so far everybody's been from the columbus area that isn't necessarily a a theme of it but uh, it's held at the columbus state community college's restaurant that's part of their culinary program it's called degrees restaurant which is a standalone restaurant you can go and eat there. It's a regular restaurant. It's just run by culinary students. Um, it's on site. I think they're open like Thursday through Saturday or maybe Wednesday through Saturday, something like that. But it's a place you can actually go. Very similar in the style of a Cameron Mitchell restaurant, just because that whole culinary program was mainly funded and sponsored by Cameron Mitchell as a big restaurant group here in Columbus. Going back to the Bincho Boys. Uh, so it's a pop-up that these three have started. Uh, they done two uh, pop-ups so far. One was to a charitable organization um, that they did a pop-up for to raise money. And then the other one was open to the public. It was at Antiques on High. We went, we had a great time. Uh, The feedback throughout the bar there was great. Everybody loved the food. Everybody's super excited. There was a line basically all the way to the ordering counter for where you would order beer, which is essentially halfway through uh, the bar at the height of the line, probably a good 30 minute wait just to get to the ticketing counter. So uh, the food was delicious. My personal favorite was the rice cake uh, that they had, but I think overall kind of the feedback that they got, the crowd pleasing favorite, I think was a uh, Japanese pumpkin or squash that they had. Uh, I think that was kind of the number one seller out of everything. I think the only thing they said they had left over was chicken, ironically, which you'd think everybody would have ordered. But it just goes to kind of show how you can play with some exotic ingredients or maybe ingredients that people don't normally see on a menu or aren't super familiar with and people are willing to try it. There is the that collective in Columbus that people are willing to try kind of things outside of their comfort zone. And that collective is slowly getting bigger and bigger. So it's great to see. We get into everything, how they founded, you know, how they started, you know, collaborating, where they think it's going to head, things that they've learned from the first couple pop-ups that they did and everything like that too as well. So we kind of cover all the bases. I mean, primarily they use a Benchiton grill, which is a Japanese style grill. We get into the dynamics of that, using that too as well, um, you know, why and how and all that stuff. And we also cover kind of future stuff that they're all working on. There's a pop-up that Jay and Ray are doing called Uh, Midnight Soul. It's a loose play on that show. I think it's on Netflix. Uh, It's called Midnight Diner, but they're going to be doing that on Friday, December 2nd. So tickets are live and available. Um, You can go to Eventbrite and find it, or you can go probably through the COSO uh, website. But if you go to Eventbrite and type in Midnight Soul, it comes up. I think it's hundred bucks. There's six seats, two seatings, 10 p.m. and midnight on Friday. So technically, I guess that would be Saturday because it's midnight, so it changes over. But two seatings sounds really cool. They're kind of playing with a bunch of different stuff. There's no real format. It's just kind of come, drink a bunch of stuff, eat a bunch of cool stuff, 
have a good time. So hopefully that's something that they continue to kind of roll with based on the success of this first one. There's also going to be another Bin Show Boys pop-up. I think Ray talks about it here in the podcast. He gives an exact date too as well. So be on the lookout for that. I believe it's December or 19th, somewhere in there. And then the Aunt Friends dinner. Uh, Matt Hagen's got his second dinner. Two of for sure four. Definitely will have four dinners. This is the second one. That is on Saturday, December 3rd. Tickets are live for that too as well. You can follow Ray at... Ray Eats Crayons and Coso.Hey. You can follow Jay at J.Clevin. Also throw a follow to at Spec Italian Eatery. And then Matt, you can follow. It's at Kitchen Matt. Also at Cafe Overlook. Preston's at Honey's Fried Chicken. Also at Service Relief. At and friends see bus. So you can follow all those guys on all the different social medias for the restaurants and their personals and stuff like that. Just so you stay in the know, get updates. You can follow all of them at Bincho Boys is the handle for the pop-up. It's a really fun episode. I know it's a lengthy intro, but I wanted to give everybody all that information of stuff that's going on here in Columbus. So if you're interested, you can get tickets or you can figure out if you want to come to the next pop-up that they do for whatever that they're doing, whether it's and friends or Midnight Soul, or Bincho Boys. You can also sometimes find Jay in the kitchen at Veritas too as well. He's back there randomly. So he was there when we ate the uh, Spanish uh, supper club. He was back there in the kitchen. So Jay's all around right now, which is awesome because he does amazing food. They all do. Without any further kind of delays, here is my conversation with the Bincho Boys, which is Chef Raymond Kim, Chef Jay Clevin, and Chef Matt Hagens here in Columbus, Ohio. Thanks, Ray, for putting this together and coordinating with everybody, the other two thirds of the the Bincho boys here. So obviously had the chance to attend the pop-up firsthand that you guys, the first one that you guys did open to the public. The reception seemed awesome. Everybody really enjoyed the food um, from everything that I could hear. And uh, from the people that we were with, the line was halfway through uh, the inside of Antiques on High uh, there too, which is a good sign when there's a, a line back in through the door up to the ordering counter on the other end. But whose idea was it first to do the pop-up? Who put this all together? Which one of you three? If I just point to the screen where you know I'm pointing at it. I'll accuse him like a witch. Yeah. Had you guys ever cooked together before? I cooked in Jay's kitchen one time. I've met Matt through Andrew Smith a couple times. And then Ray used to work at the coffee shop right next to Cleaver. I would just hit him up with my morning coffee with a thousand and one different food ideas of the day that we both had. Uh, and then he opened up his place, Coso, uh, which if you have not been, you should absolutely just run down there now. Just skip this podcast. Turn it off. Go right away. But in the East Market, I was opening up uh, for the butcher and grocer, their little sandwich shop there. Uh, so we got to reconnect there and, you know, really just have fun and bounce ideas. And Ray is so great at just activating these ideas. Same with Matt of, you know, I think a lot of chefs just like, oh, we should do a pop up sometime. We should get together and, I'll, you know, we'll we'll do something. And Ray's like, is the 23rd great for you? Here's all your advertising you need. Um, I'm going to send out flyers tomorrow. You're like, oh, OK, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I'll, I'll get charcoal. So you're saying that uh, there's a, a weird sometimes lack of follow through in the uh, restaurant and chef community, Jay? <laughs> It's a great way to, uh, when you meet up with other chefs of just like, like we should collaborate sometime. That'd be great. You know, like I like your stuff and I like your ideas, but then it's, you know. Everyone's busy. Yeah, everyone's busy. It's it's so hard to sync up. And they honestly just are probably secretly sneak dishing. Yeah, let's hook up and do a thing. I fucking hate you. <laughs> That's what I have them. They give you an email address and it's like invalid or something like that. Just return to sender. Yeah, like I'll call you the second Tuesday next week. You have to find out about their other pop-ups that they're doing later in the week, and it, it could have been us. We could have been happy. <laughs> you guys did one pop-up before the Antiques on High one. That one was a charity event, right, to raise money. I think it was for homelessness or a homelessness foundation, something like that, right? Yeah, Here to Serve. It's an organization based out on the West Side, and specific to that event, they were raising money for uh, tents for houseless people and folk. Uh, so that's something Matt and I did, and that was pretty chaotic. Chaotic, yeah. It was our first, it was our beta test, and with that, everything that attached to like a beta test with all the kinks being worked out. But it was fun. I had fun. It was so much fun. What was chaotic about it? Just never having cooked together with each other before, not knowing like what all stuff you needed. 
well, yeah, you got to get your like loadout set. And we had an idea of what our loadout was going to be. But then like the day of we were supposed to, we were like, we got to be on site at four o'clock to like make sure the fire's going. And then we got there at like 530. So as we serving food at like six o'clock and the fire's just like, fuck you, we're not, <laughs> we're not ready. But uh, we got everything going and it was a good time. So when you guys kind of finally come together, Ray gets this pop up, all the materials together, marketing, all that stuff, picks a date. It's like, no, 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 this is the day we're doing it. Why Antiques on High for the location? Was that just a place that seemed cool foot traffic wise or just available opportunity space? Why there? Why for the first one? I don't know, they said, okay. A little bit of a column A, column B. Um, I, I think Ray set up the interview for us, and they had just had a food truck move out on Sunday nights. Uh, so it was kind of just fortuitous. And the great thing is we'll barbecue anywhere, you know. We'll barbecue in your backyard, you know. You have a party, a bar mitzvah, we'll, we'll be there. Did you guys know that uh, the waffle guy was going to be there? No, that was the most fucked up part of it. Yeah, she said hi right beforehand, too. We didn't realize she was cooking that night. Yeah, super, super nice. That was miscoordination on our part. I thought she was stopping by to say hi. And then when everything was over, someone was like, oh, yeah, there was this other person here to sell food tonight. And we were, we were all like, we, we like hugged each other and cried. Like we felt really bad. Just so you guys know, it was not your fault. Apparently, they were talking about this at the bar when we were there. And normally, they're there every fourth Sunday of the month. But that month had five Sundays. So that was the issue where they're like, we always said the last Sunday of the month. But then like it was the fourth Sunday instead of the fifth. So that was where they're confused. So it wasn't your fault. It was the calendar had an extra Sunday in it that nobody anticipated, apparently. So. Yeah, well, she was super nice. And honestly, it probably helped me out incredibly because I didn't realize how much clout these guys had. So I, I really wasn't ready for that line right off the bat and, you know, didn't have my digiton ship legs under me yet. So hopefully she uh, slowed it down just enough for me not to lose it all. So everything's cooked over a Bichiton grill. What model did you guys go with and why? Because like there's a few different versions, right? Like, I mean, there's obviously shape and different variations off that but i mean there's you know you get a quote-unquote hibachi one yakitori i think there's like a bergoff one which is like round but why did you choose the model that you guys went with we should just get off of here and ray can just handle the rest of it oh no 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 it just looked really cool that's honestly the answer it was really shiny and the fact that it wasn't ceramic was like the most attractive part um and that with ceramic grill where it tends to crack real easily like the small baby one we have um it's already kind of cracking inside so honestly the durability and it was shiny as fuck it looked cool but going forward we probably would need another one of those or jay's planning to bring jay's diametaceous earth like is actually conro yeah, yeah. I like that one because it's, it's perfect. A skewer fits right across it. You know, you don't worry about burning the, the tips of the skewer so much. Uh, really focus. I mean, it's meant for that and not just everything else where my large one kind of, you know, you got to play a little more Tetris sometimes where this one, you kind of just move down the row or where it's hot, you place it. And Is there a big difference in, in shape, the rectangle versus round? The metal ones, what I noticed is that it will not have that irradiated heat as much where uh, mines, which made out of the earth clay, uh, diametaceous earth is you take all the hot coals out of that. It's still kind of at a 300 degree warm still that thing can blast on heat. And, but of course with more space comes more charcoal and more air, more flames. And you really want to just be cooking on hot charcoal and not just over flame kind of deal. This isn't fire cooking. This is, you know, red hot charcoal cooking, which kind of helps cook from inside out and not just toasting the outside and leaving you with raw chicken. Yeah. Isn't the whole kind of claim to fame is that essentially you're cooking over tons of heat, but no flames or smoke? Yeah. The fuel itself is smokeless. So, the you know, most of the smoke that you get is from drippings from the food. And so, you know, it's like a, a, a cleaner, more savory, like appropriate smoke for the food. Is there a specific charcoal you guys went with? I'm assuming it wasn't like Kingsford in there, but I, I think there's a bunch of different kinds. Normally it's uh, what I think white charcoal is kind of the one that people go for sometimes. I think we went with them kind of like the mid range. So, so what they do is they, um, it's basically like compressed and baked sawdust, basically cooked down into coal. I think we might try splurge and get some, some roasted 
wood next time, see how that goes. It's supposed to be a little hotter, burn a little bit longer. You can't go buy any of that around here. You got to like special order all of it. You brought some time, right, Jay? Yeah, I don't want to tell you where I got it because it gets harder and harder to order each week at the prices I'm getting at. I might keep that a covenant secret. It's Amazon. Uh, Pock Pock is is great. I think they went out of business, but they keep selling me charcoal from different places. And it is for price to burn length and heat. Really, really a, a cheap steal. But I think Ray brought some nicer, I think, white bamboo... Not fruit wood, but bamboo. Yeah, I think. And that stuff burned really high and long. I was really impressed with that stuff. So is the difference between all those different types essentially how hot it would get and how long it'll last kind of thing? Kind of what you get out of it at the end. Yeah, it's not like we have a lot of charcoal here. It's made of specific kinds of wood and they impart a flavor for those the way that they're processed it's not really to add you know like the flavor that you get from smoke is smoke from the food it's not from that so it's really just kind of about durability how long it's going to burn how hot it's going to get when we were cooking in the restaurant and we we're using the charcoal and we'd have to go up to a hardware store sometimes and get like the whole lump charcoal not the briquettes with the whole lump it wipes you out after like 30 minutes of burning too hot too fast these the Chaton charcoals are perfect for really reliable, long, consistent heat throughout. Yeah. And no added smoke flavor, which is, I think, the big selling point. So you get to just taste the meat. You know, we're not making barbecue. We're making barbecue, but. I mean, yeah, it's what's that uh, <laughs> ugly, delicious argument? Yeah. Prior to this, it sounds like you guys all had experience cooking on a Chaton grill. Me, it's my house, though, not in a restaurant. Yeah. But it's all just at home kind of cooking. So this is the first, like, I don't want to say for other people, but out in the market time you've cooked in this style for all of you. For me, I think Jay's got a little. Yeah, we used to have a charcoal grill because we were too poor to afford a gas one. A gas one's just essentially an oven that's outside, man. We looked at the prices at Wasserstrom and we said, ooh, $300 for a grill. I think we'll stick with the charcoal one. Yeah, we had a lot of learning mistakes early on with that bad boy that I think helped prepare us for this moment in the sun. I feel like you're always learning with charcoal uh, just about how to be patient and not fuck it up because it's so simple. But also things move out of control real fast. What about you, Ray? Have you been cooking on a bitch tongue grill for a long time or? No, honestly, not really. Just little bits of here and there experimentation at home, but not to the extent where it was like commercial or for large crowds. Do you guys all remember the first time that you cooked on a binge ton grill? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How did that go? I fucked it up. I That charcoal, it takes so fucking long to heat up and uh, light up. My dumb ass thinking that like it would just light up instantaneously like within 20, 30 minutes. Uh, and it was at a friends like barbecue so i brought out the fucking bitch of tan with the whole entire setup and i was like i'm gonna grill some kaibi and it's gonna be so fucking dang with this like real expensive charcoal but ended up not really happening because the charcoal took so long to light up and i used up all the fire star <laughs> yeah it was a shit show but from that experience learned that fire prep is like the key much like how we with the antiques on high pop up man and i got there about two hours earlier to get the fire going it took about an hour and a half ish or so to get it to that point and then yeah that's my first experience with it jay what was your first experience very similar it's like we didn't know we did it in a restaurant which is the worst idea and you know we were coming up with specials you know two hours before opening for service and which is right on cue for us and sometimes they just don't work and uh but we got it going way too hot right off the bat we just overfilled that thing with charcoal and it was just like scorching there's no hot holding there was no temping to order and so we just had like we were cooking over live fire at that point and just hanging by the seat of our pants i think the worst thing though that people don't think about is charcoal disposal because those things stay hot for three days afterwards and getting like the right bucket and the right sand and figure out your best disposal plan for that we had no idea and i don't want to admit this but there has been maybe two times that we've had to fill a dumpster full of snow on accident because someone emptied out the wrong payout at the wrong time out of rotation. You didn't burn the restaurant down, so that's cool. Yeah, that's great. 
I don't know if that's a save. I don't know. It was in like our backyard for Thanksgiving. We grilled some mackerel and like some oysters and I don't know. It was a good time. I don't know. Like maybe read enough books or watched enough videos on YouTube. I don't know. Oh, man, did perfect. Great. The reception overall seemed great. I mean, did you guys make it through the entire evening or you guys wind up selling out or selling out of certain things? Basically ended up with a bunch of chicken left. Uh, We sold out everything else. I think the first thing we sold out of was... The kabocha? Oh, no, the rice cake. No, kabocha first, right? Then the rice cake, maybe? Short rib was a fast seller as well, I think. People were yelling at me in my face. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. You don't tell me who sold out of first. Yeah. So by the end of the night, we just had like chicken. We like gave some away. Ray brought some special Scooby snacks for us. And we like grilled some scallops and ate them and drank a little bit too much or a lot bit too much. And with future pop ups that you guys do, will the menu change at all from event to event or does it pretty much stay the same? Because I think I saw like the first one that you guys did. It looked like there was tomatoes or something possibly that were involved. I don't change probably like event to event. Um, and then I think we're going to probably add maybe a couple of cold dishes, a couple of cold dishes. And then maybe I think we're going to maybe grill some rice balls as opposed to trying to have a rice steamer there. I think we'll do some rice balls um, as well to just kind of like spread things out a little bit. I think we're planning to go into it with a little bit of a tidier menu, like a, a few less things, you know, keeping all that stuff going and keeping an eye on everything was, you know, a challenge. We learned from our mistakes. What was the biggest challenge then of the first you know official pop-up that was open to the public was it just timing was it storage definitely didn't have enough grill space i would say that's probably the biggest lesson uh we couldn't grill as much as we needed to be grilling we got those boats for like oh someone will get a skewer and they'll eat it out that little tiny paper boat and then we were getting people were like we'll take two of everything you're like oh okay, well, I don't, this is just going to be ridiculous to carry eight of these around. So I just didn't realize what people were really coming for, or, you know, organizing those exit strategies for those meats, I guess. Is there anything that you guys won't be able to essentially put on the menu? Or is it kind of the world is your oyster? You can guys can pretty much do whatever you want within reason. Yeah, like, can you grill it, you know? Yeah, that's where my life is right now. I just do whatever I want within reason. I would probably steer away from shellfish the condensed amount of space that we're working with there, like, you know, so some mackerel or something possibly, but anything that's a major allergen, I'd probably try to avoid in that kind of a situation. Yeah. Like no peanut sauce. I feel like stuff like that. I might steer away from, I don't want to kill anybody. Is there anything that you guys want to try within the next couple pop-ups that you do just to see how it does, see how like the reception does from the public or from a sales standpoint or anything like something that's almost kind of like not out there, but you're like, I wonder if people would want this, like, well, maybe they would, maybe they won't like, let's find out. I think what I was most surprised about was how receptive people were to some of the more obscure skewers uh, that we had and how early those sold out. I mean, the squash one selling out, I didn't make that many thinking we weren't going to sell that many. People were willing to try new things. People were willing to get in there and not even understanding some of the rice cakes and stuff like that and going for it. And that was really just nice to see. So I think now it's kind of opened up the floodgates to, you know, whatever really we want. So I'll go around the room again. What's one thing that uh, you guys want to change or improve on or learned since doing the first Bincho Boys event? We'll start with Jay this time. Yeah, I got there late because of traffic. And so our setup and everything down from Expo, I forget how famous these guys are or how much clout they have on their Instagrams. And so I did not expect a line. And uh, that I think that almost took us down. Also, I'm going to bring my grill next time, too. I think just more grill space, just like nine fires going. We'll be set just pumping it out. I think uh, maybe like a uh, container, more more thoughtfulness into some of the containers and packing uh, as we like get out there. Like the Tare's got, you know, like a little messier and messier as we went along. And then, you know, like we had a little bit of oil there, which would have been good to use for a couple of the ingredients. I, I feel like it would have been good if it was in like a spray bottle or something like that to, to apply it. I feel like that would have been really good for like the rice cakes to make sure they got a really nice, even cook on them. Um, and, you know, it could be sesame oil or something that, you know, like add some flavor. I don't know, like to figure out a way to not inhale enough smoke to probably 
decrease my lifespan by seven to ten days. Uh, but that might be, you know, asking for too much. I guess some like organizational adjustments and then I think another thing that would help make it that would help make it run more smooth is uh so earlier in the pop-up my brother came through and helped out and uh he was sent out to get like a dongle because we didn't have one uh for our square reader he came back with the wrong one they're going for it probably grabbing that USB-C dongle and i just felt so bad for having people wait i gotta be honest with you that saved our lives that like like we we needed it Shout out to Ben, too. Ben came in, like, secretly handy. He got in that Avatar state there and was doing nine things at once for us. Just, like, sausages. Just eyes were glowing. It was insane. Running to the Radio Shack or Rising Story app. I think it's also going to help with a uh, more condensed menu. And that way, it's easier to read tickets and then relay information and improve communication with the two of you. I'm sorry. I had a good time. I don't know what you're apologizing for. I had a good time, too, after a few drinks. Look at us, huh? Just a couple of guys cooking chicken skewers. Like, it was awful before I was drinking, but then... That was the first time I've... I tried a Negroni. He did not like it. It was okay. So bitter. He was like, no, really, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Will Ben Show Boys always be in a pop-up format? You guys want to always keep it kind of a pop-up, or can you envision down the road a food stall or brick and mortar i'm assuming no food truck based on your experience matt with a food truck fuck that <laughs> it's probably just because i'm like too big to be on a truck that's probably my whole like objection to it people keep asking like my partners are like oh you want to open another Preston's truck and i'm like no because like if we have one i have to get on it and i don't i don't want to do that i could see like a little basement bar situation i, I feel like that could be cool Boys, I'm sorry. I did not win the Powerball. Otherwise, that would have been a lot of capital to mess around with. I did win uh, $4 on my lottery. I texted Cindy like, we won. She was like, and then I sent her the picture of like $4. She was like, fuck you. Yeah, somebody out in California won it. They don't need that. Really? Oh, man. That's me, Jay-Z money. It wasn't like L.A. or San Francisco. I forget the town. It started with, a, I think, a T or something like that. It's someplace I've never heard of. So hopefully it's somebody like in the western part of the state, in the middle of the desert. You just came back in California, you gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a little trip to L.A. How was that? First time in L.A.? Uh, it was good. I had been there much younger, man, on a drinking quest. And this was the first time I uh, could afford some good food. Yeah, so uh, first time enjoying L.A. find that to be impossible. I do not like L.A. I'm a hater. I hate. I don't like LA. Maybe I've just been in the wrong places, doing the wrong things. No, you're in the right places. It's just every place you walk into, you're the ugliest person there. Somehow, it's awful. This guy like thought I was on a TV show, and he was just like, "That's what I didn't like." It was like all that. It was a lot of like wanting to be in proximity to like fame, and we were like arguing about me not being on a TV show. Like, like I was absolutely not on a TV show until he offered to buy me a drink, and then I was like, "Cool, man, yeah." Oh, you should have taken it, yeah. Yeah, I haven't uh, really explored L.A. The airport's terrible. That's the airport I never want to be in. But it does seem like a place that would, if anybody even has remote, like, acute anxiety, like, just getting around seems miserable. Everything's in a strip mall. Like, probably takes an hour to get to, like, the other side of town. I mean, I got to imagine, you know, it can get pretty stressful real quick, like, just trying to get anywhere that you actually want to go. I did stay in the hills, and it was beautiful to wake up in the hills. Yeah, that's nice. Jay and Ray, you guys have a ticketed pop-up coming up, Midnight Soul, I think Friday, December 2nd. What's the story behind that? What's the details? Yeah, it was something we conceptualized while playing Overwatch together one night. And by that, maybe like last week. I don't know. I've always been a fan of Jay's cooking, and he has like a natural attraction about him and the fact that like he's someone you want to like work with and like so yeah we were talking and we both were talking about the netflix show midnight diner and we we're talking about how fun it would be to do that sort of like late night eerie in columbus or how there is a lack of such places in columbus and how maybe we could add to columbus by providing that for columbus so we're just playing around with concepts and we kind of landed on Korean kosher type of outlook, vision. Yeah, first off, I want to say 
I can't wait to bring this up to my therapist, all the nice things he said about me. We were talking about it, about doing a pop-up like everyone does. And of course, Ray was always just like, yep, let's have a date. And, but it really is just like, we're not going to tell anybody what they're getting or drinking or, you know, really setting a theme. This is low amount of people, low stakes for us. You know, we really get to just kind of go crazy and experiment. And hopefully we find a few people who will trust us with their mouths. And we were jealous of Matt and his pop up. I know. Yeah. It's like, are we not and friends? I don't know. You're all on my friends list. (laughs) So, yeah, Matt, you have uh, the second and friends dinner, I think, the following night. Who's all involved with this one? Because we had friends that went to the first one. They said everything was delicious. The service was fantastic. It felt like a real restaurant. There was no glitches, no, you know, waiting 30 minutes for your drink to show up or anything. Everything ran smooth. And I think you would probably agree with that based on some of your Instagram posts uh, and stuff like that. But who's all involved with the second one? So I'm not normally like a, like a, oh shit, we crushed it guy. Like I don't <laughs> normally feel that way, but there's been twice that I can remember. And that's one of them. Like we got done and I was like, no, it was a good job. If you don't like it, fuck you, get out. Like, like we had a good time. I don't care. This next one is going to be kind of a food truck reunion um, with Laura Lee from Achamama, uh, Matt Swint from Matia Breads. And I'm going to get in a lot of trouble for Mark Tolentino that started Maya's. We all kind of started trucks around a similar time like back in the day um and every time we pulled up to an event we were like you know we'd be taking each other food and stuff we we're working on and like chatting each other up and like you know talking shit and telling stories and it was always a good time as i was kind of like trying to schedule the four dates i had set up i wanted to be sure that i had an opportunity to hang out with those with those kids again just in case these four and friends are the last and friends where i hang out have a good time i think we have the main like solidified and yeah so there for sure will be two more after this or two more after this for sure two more if we're all having a good time so like i <laughs> like seriously i feel like i'm trying to get to a place where if it's not fun i'm i'm not doing it i've just been working my ass off for for a decade i mean 12 15 hours were just like regular days uh and like you know 18s were you know pretty pretty normal i am exhausted and feel old uh, so like if stuff's fun, I want to do it. And if it's not fun, I want to s- try to stop doing it. And so like, as long as this is fun and people are having a good time, we're doing a good job. I'll be interested in trying to like continue to do it. Hopefully I work with all of my friends in Columbus and then the people that I don't like can be invited by other friends. <laughs> like I'll be like, okay, I worked with everyone I wanted to work with. We're still going to do this event, but now you pick some people you want to work with. And I'm not even going to come because I don't like them. <laughs> So this one has a little bit more of a theme, kind of food truck reunion almost as the theme kind of, right? Yeah, it's, you know, I think really loosely, like it's a theme because it's people, we are on food trucks. I don't, no one is like, hey, I'm going to do a revival of this dish I did on my truck or or anything like that. Kate's at a real high bar <laughs> for execution. Uh, you know, she showed up super ready and like put up good food. But for us, it was just really kind of a, the first time I really worked with Kate, we did like um, a pop-up. Uh, at the the commissary on town back in the day. And it was just like my favorite things dinner um, because she was doing that as a series. And so this was like kind of like our favorite things at the moment dinner. And we like the first course was a French fry and frosty macaron. Like, you know, it's just, hey, let's just make some good food and hang out with hopefully cool people. So will Matt Swint be doing more than bread then? Uh, It's just only bread. He's doing nine courses of bread. (laughs) We're going to have an ambulance standing by uh, outside to take people to the hospital as as needed. No, actually, I think he's only got one course that is bread related. I think he's doing a a pasta course and we're we're talking about a a cheese course. Okay, there's bread in that too, but one bread specific course, like one thing that's very, very bready. So Ray, you obviously got... A couple pop-ups. You got the Bincho Boys. You got this Soul pop-up coming up, Midnight Soul. Also have Coso. What's next for you aside from obviously, you know, returning to the podcast by yourself to talk about your career in Coso? But uh, what else is kind of in the works? What else you got going on? Nothing really concrete as of yet, but I'd love more opportunities to work with uh, two of my most favorite people in the Columbus uh cooking scene Matt and Jay they've been really great mentors um they've been such great leaders in their own community and their own right 
Matt, for example, uh, he's doing that one program over by the courthouse uh, where he is employing formerly incarcerated folk. And, you know, Jay, Jay is fucking awesome in every sense of the word. He's been so instrumental in keeping my sanity together uh, when COSA was first opening. And, you know, yeah, hopefully we get more opportunities to be able to work with the two of them or alongside the two of them. Ray, I'm gonna call my mom after this. This is important to me. <laughs> the call so you can cuss directly at my mom. Curse at my mom right now. Jay, for you, Cleaver closed. Uh, so you're a little restaurant homeless, uh, I think, right? Yeah, restaurant homeless, yeah. But you've been popping up here or there, doing obviously these couple pop ups, the Pincho Boys doing some freelancing. So what's next for you? Yeah, so hopefully I'm opening up spec for Josh Dalton here in the next few months if he doesn't fire me before then. He's been nice enough to throw me a couple bones at Veritas every now and then of whenever people need a vacation or a break. And uh, But honestly, you know, I think you and I both have uh, new kids and uh, I've been really enjoying the first time, you know, actually having a home life for once before that gets shut down completely for the next five years. So that's great to learn their names for once, you know. So you and, and your wife, you guys had another kid? Yeah, so I got Zelda, Seven, and Ophelia, who's five months and growling. Fun, you know, they're just filled with pepper and poop. Matt, you got Preston's, Cafe Overlook, Service Relief Kitchen, and Friends, and uh, this pop-up, Bincho Boys, and then also you uh, moved to Cincy on the Horizon. Anything else you're going to add to that list? Probably not. And Friends is also kind of a function of being bored with, like, just cooking burgers my whole life and you know also hanging out with these guys uh, has been a function of that as well if something's fun if somebody wants to do something fun i'll do that i don't really want to you know there's some new like competition like series things happening in town and like i don't want to i don't want to compete with people i want to like hang out and like learn from people and do stuff like that so if you if you're listening and you want to do something fun give me a call we'll do something fun even if it's uh, in Cincinnati, would you be willing to do something fun there? Yeah, I feel like I'm going to have to do something fun in Cincinnati. Maybe like roast all the lizards that are everywhere. A lot of lizards in Cincinnati. Lizards and stairs is basically all that Cincinnati is made of. I mean, I'm here now, uh, generally speaking, from Monday to Thursday. And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we're in Cincinnati, like trying to find a place to live. And, you know, Cindy's there, the meat of the week, just generally speaking anyway. So... And we were like actively kind of figuring out on the fly. She started her job like three weeks ago. So we need to figure something out. Oh, just to clear our names. I don't even know why the fuck we picked December 2nd. We didn't know it was your event literally the day before or day after. We're bad fan friends. Oh, that's cool. I'll call the hitman and tell them to leave me that alone. <laughs> uh, it was literally like after an Instagram comment where someone was like, oh, like, are you doing it on the same day as Anne Friends? And I had like a oh shit moment and I just didn't reply to that comment. Yeah, I'm sorry, Matt. Like the thing that I'm salty about is I feel like it's going to be another pop-up that you've done that I can't go to. Uh, so it's the only thing that I'm a little bit salty about. Or maybe maybe I'll get done early enough on Friday that I can still go. Or if I can get a ticket. If I can get it's a ticket. It's late, baby. It's late, late. There's always a seat. If if there's a ticket. Bencho boys, like I said, the food was great. The reception seemed great. Um, so that's cool that you guys will be continuing to to do those, and then obviously the the pop ups. You know, I know we're gonna try and make uh try and make it to both. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We're definitely gonna make it to one of the Anne Friends dinners. That I can promise you. Uh, one of the four, we will for sure be there. So life is just uh, scheduling is chaotic, but we'll for sure be at one of the four. While we're clearing our names and clearing the air, someone made a post about someone that was not at the Bencho Boys pop up made a comment that it made them miss Kenny and Masako. Nobody in town misses Kenny and Masako more than I do. You know, we're not trying to we're not trying to be them. They don't hate us because they ain't us. I actually saw on their uh, Bencho Taco Instagram that they're planning a Columbus pop up soon. Like I'll be the first in line. Those folks are rad. Yeah. I messaged them before the whole bench of boys pop up just to kind of like get their blessing. And they're like, cool, go for it. But yeah, yeah, they're so cool. Social media is a weird place. Just don't pay too much attention to anything that you see there. <laughs> Especially like the Columbus Reddit is it's a strange place man i will it's there's a lot of every once in a while there'll be like a food thing and then just most of the comments are just like 
just nobody wants to pay like any more than five dollars for a burger like it's very clear that there's a good section of the population that's like why is this burger like fifteen dollars and it's like well <laughs> ground beef is currently uh, seven to eight bucks a pound like start doing some math you should pay people money instead of pocketfuls of rocks to like cook food or you're you know just rent is a thing reddit's reddit's wild we talked about the whole like um like reddit explode and blow up over the tutors homage pop-up i did like reddit's wild matt i mean just kind of trail off that same idea i mean matt was instrumental when i was running kitchens early on he was the first person who was like hey you got your plate cost under you know under control and stuff like that but nobody's talking about toilet paper and ketchup and what that cost uh, out the door. You know, it's like you have to factor in all those small things. And that was a real aha moment for me of, you know, how to look at my finances for a restaurant. Is my beard getting grayer? Like, wow, we're gone. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, such an old man. Excited for the, the pop-ups and everything that you guys got going on and, and feel free to uh, plug away. Uh, I think tickets, are on sale for and friends now for midnight soul they'll be going on sales soon friday 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 what time thursday night close to midnight they'll go on sale uh we either want to sell out or no one buys a ticket and we say it was successful but there's no proof either way (laughs) uh either or would be great for us what platform are you using for this uh eventbrite because uh we're amateurs and i only care about food hopefully it doesn't crash it's 13 people, you know, like, I don't, it's, we're not Noma Kyoto, you know? It'll probably sell out in the same amount of time, like, to like 40 minutes back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like Andrew Smith did a, a pop up and he used Eventbrite for it and it went on sale at midnight. And I think it was like 20 or 40 seconds in, like, it was done, but it took like a half hour before, like, the thing updated because the queue was so long and, like, it couldn't handle the traffic, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, he has way more friends. Yeah, He's so likable. Yeah, uh, I feel like we're we're gonna have to like I'm gonna have to go out with a sign spinning kind of thing going on. You know, like buy tickets to my dinner. I mean, I could bring Benjamin and Chris, and that's too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll fill it out with stuffed animals and family. It'll be great. You did a pop up not too long ago, Ray Ray, that sold out in like a few minutes that I couldn't go to. I'm very salty about that. I just, I want I hope I'm getting my point across about how salty I am about the unavailability of tickets to come near pop ups. Oh, I like that was all Issa. I yeah, that was all Issa's and Issa's popularity. Uh Issa from Three Bites. But we did a pop up dinner there for their version of and friends the name escapes me what was it but anyways yeah i couldn't go i don't remember i didn't think we'd sell out i honestly thought it'd be like the last minute and like people would have to like buy it on discount or it'd be like a pity buy or kristen would send people to buy <laughs> after they gave money to those people yeah but i was surprised on how fast it sold i think it was like an hour and a half hour and that was a fuck deal too because we uh imported sea bream from japan wasabi like the actual wasabi stock got some fresh uni truffles all for a very humble 60 dollar ticket <laughs> yeah he kind of went overboard could have just handed everybody like a 20 like thanks for coming yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a burger and a 20 thanks so much for hanging out. i think she just calls it a dinner series yeah she's had some cool ones there though i mean Bo, a Pechka bakery one that I missed out on. Yeah, Masha. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. All awesome. I feel like I always wake up at the wrong time to hear about these things and, and it's already sold out. They're pretty successful. Same new ideas for podcasts, you know, guests. Yeah, Carrie, uh, Carrie Young already uh, beat you to that, though. Because she did a pop up there and she was, her episode hasn't aired yet, but that's, that's coming out. Okay. Well, that's not my fault, then. He tried. But yeah, go ahead and uh, plug uh, everything. Uh, Ray, plug whatever whatever you want. Social media, websites, go for it. So we're working on our next Bean Show Boy pop-up, which will be on the 19th at the Oracle uh, in Old Town East. So I'm still following up with the details on that, but hopefully the weather will be nice. Climate change has really screwed shit up, and it's been like a very soft 60s, 70s. Um, so maybe it'll sustain. I honestly didn't think that we would have such great weather for our last pop-up, but that turned out to be real, real nice. Yeah, it was like 80 degrees that day. And then what else? Because 
You're going to tell people to come eat at Coso? Because I'm going to come eat at Coso right away. We're opening up a boba shop next to Coso. Hopefully that'll be built out soon. And I guess kind of like exclusive sneak peek. My parents are bringing in uh, BBQ Chicken. It's a Korean fried chicken franchise. Uh, that's going to be in campus. I think they're based out of New York. Or no, they are Korean, but they may have their HQ in New York. But that'll be coming in maybe December. Next December, 2023? This December. Oh, this December. So next month. Yeah. Like really soon? You're getting a lot of breaking news today. Yeah, that's that's not the goal of this, but... No big deal, but it's like a boba shop that's opening really soon. Is the East Market done? Is that full? Are all the stalls taken in there? Or is there still some empty? Because the last time I was there, there was still like three places that hadn't even like opened yet. They're opening up a Mexican place called Masa. That's right by the staircase. And that's going to be real, real legit Mexican food. Like the couple who's opening it up, they came over and they were like chatting us up and we're getting real friendly. And they're talking about how they're going to make their tortillas to order, which I don't think anywhere else in Columbus does. So I'm really stoked for that. Where are all of those people going to fit to make tortillas to order for a busy taco shop? I don't know. It's crazy. Ambitious, but I like it. And it's also not your problem to figure out. <laughs> uh, what else is going in? There are talks of bringing in another Mediterranean concept inside. So did some people drop out then that were supposed to open? Yeah, I don't know what else is coming into the market. We just expanded our bodega offerings. We're getting some really cool product like um, some soy sauce from Momofuku. We're getting some Mr. Bing Chili Crisp. We're getting some Upper East Gochujang and a whole bunch of other cool like specialty. I hate to use the word boutique, but boutique items to sell. We also stocked up on some really nice Rishi tea. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked for what's to come in the next month. We're doing some aesthetic changes too. We're finally adding lights on that fucking railing. <laughs> I do have one complaint about the Momofuku products. They expire really quick because we got the soy sauce... The chili crunch thing, and I think it was like a tamarind sauce. And then I swear, and I'm probably exaggerating a little bit, but like three months later, it was like, oh, this shit's expired, apparently. Like, except for the chili crunch. That lasted forever, but like... Date expired or like not good? Date expired, yeah. That happens a lot in early food manufacturing. Like everything has to have an expiration date. That's just like the rule. And so early on, unless you can prove like, you know, by testing that it's going to last for, you know, two years, you can't, can't do it. Ray, they can find you on Instagram, Ray Eats Crans, and then Coso.hi. Yeah, Coso.hae. And then Bincho Boys has its own too now, right? Yes. And then you can find uh, Jay at J.Clevin. Uh, no? Okay. JK. Jay, you change yours? I didn't change it. I just don't need the plug, you know? You know, just plug Oso, Bencho Boys. You know, find me at my hats at Fondani Celerant, Jacques Pimpin, DJ Nays, Limon. I don't know. But uh, yeah, no, go to Coso, uh, check out Service and Cafe Overlook. Fuck yeah. Nailed it. Matt, your kitchen, Matt, kitchen underscore Matt, and Coso Hay. Ah, oh, stop it, y'all. <laughs> Um, yeah, Cafe Overlook. People should come to Cafe Overlook. It's good. It's for something good. The food's good. The view of the city's like the best. That was the one highlight of jury duty. I had to go across the street to the other courthouse. And then all you have to do is just go through security. The only part that was slightly confusing is after you get through security, you're going up that walkway. And then I think there's like a sign that says like juvenile court, like to the right or whatever. The first set of elevators only go up to like the sixth floor. That's not the set that you need. You have to go pass those then make a right and then it's the next set of elevators that you hit will take you up there if you go like up the stairs and to the right you just pass the first bank of elevators and go to the next bank of elevators actually either of the next two banks will take you upstairs if you're there for jury duty don't go outside because you don't have to do that you can go downstairs from one courthouse under the street to the other courthouse you don't have to go through security again you can also order ahead uh, to a cafe overlook, which I would recommend doing because it's really busy at lunchtime. Yeah. And then at and friends and I think at service relief kitchen on Instagram too for you. But, um, and friends, see bus. That's the stuff. 
Bintro Boys was a great experience. We got to try it firsthand, so looking forward to the additional pop-ups and then also the additional pop-ups that you guys all kind of have going on separately and future projects and, and stuff that's in the works. So we'll make it to as many as we can uh, as time allows, um, but we'll for sure be making it to a, a few of them over the next couple months, trying everything firsthand because it's, it's just good food and it's fun and it's easy to get to. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for having us. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much. A big thanks again to Ray for setting all this up, but also for Jay and Matt always being down to pop on a podcast and chat. It was a long time overdue for having Jay back on the podcast. He was our very first guest. Been eating his food for a long, long time back since his rock mill days uh, when he was you know a sous chef there and, and andrew smith was running the kitchen so i think jay does amazing tasting menus uh, i don't think he gets enough opportunity to do those um, but the ones that he's done have been awesome some of the best tasting menus that you can find in columbus so uh, really looking forward to him doing some more of those but this pop-up is is really awesome the food is delicious like i said the feedback from everybody you could hear around the bar everybody's super excited super into it my favorite thing was the rice cake but Everything was delicious. I think my probably least favorite of the things was the mushroom, and that's just because I'm not a big mushroom person. So usually mushrooms to me are just kind of mushrooms. But you can also check out, you know, Matt Hagen's food too as well on its own. Preston's, Honey's, Fried Chicken, Cafe Overlook. Uh, he's got the Anne Friends dinners too. They got another dinner, the second one, second of four for sure, which is going to be on Saturday, December 3rd. So if you're interested in that, it's at Degrees Restaurant, which is at the Columbus State Community College, their culinary program, uh, their culinary building. And it's a full service restaurant. So this is a place that is normally a restaurant during the week. They're just taking it over and using the facilities for the pop-up. So it's got that kind of restaurant touch, uh, restaurant feel and vibe and everything. But we didn't get to go to the first one. Unfortunately, uh, we had another obligation that we went to uh, that we already had kind of scheduled prior, but we had some friends that went to it and they said it was amazing. The service was on point. There was you know no glitches. You couldn't even tell it was a pop-up. You know, and the food is delicious too as well. So they had a really good time. So I'd highly recommend it. And that way, uh, Matt keeps doing these, uh, you know, once a month, uh, even once he gets past kind of the the four, like he said. Uh, and you could also check out uh, Ray's Food to at Coso, which is inside the East Market downtown in Columbus. It's a newer food market that opened kind of earlier this year. They're still kind of working on filling, I think, all the vendor spots, as Ray mentioned. So they got some new stuff coming in and everything. But they have a katsu sando on the menu there at Coso that I've had, and it's delicious. Like, it's amazing. I think they also have another variation now. I think they have a chicken one. The one I had was pork. Uh, and I've also heard from, ironically, the guy who cuts my hair that the wings that they have are amazing too as well. And that's a lot from somebody just randomly to tell you like, oh yeah, this place has fantastic wings. And you're like, eh, you know, usually take kind of recommendations with a grain of salt when you know it's already a legit place. And then they tell you like, oh, this random person who probably knows nothing about like the backstory of the place or food in general or anything like that, they tell you something's amazing on the menu, that means it really is amazing and it's on the menu. So make sure to try those two as well. I'll be trying those soon. Uh, I haven't had the wings there, but I'm super excited. Yeah, so again, you can follow everybody on Instagram at Bincho Boys is the main account. You can follow Ray over at Ray Eats Crayons and at Coso.Hey. You can follow Jay at J.Clevin and also at Spec Italian Eatery. And then for Matt, it's at Kitchen Matt, also at Preston's Burgers, at Honey's Fried Chicken, at Cafe Overlook, at Service Relief Kitchen, and at Service underscore Relief underscore Kitchen, at In Friends Seabus, and then also, of course, like I said, all three of them at Bincho Boys. Um, so they'll be announcing their next pop-up, location, time, date, all that stuff through the Bincho Boys Instagram. I'm sure they'll share it on their personals and everything, but make sure to follow uh, if you're interested in any of their food uh, outside of the Bincho Boys there. And friends, second dinner, that's, like I said, Saturday, December 3rd. Tickets are live for that. And then also the Midnight Soul pop-up that Jay and Ray are doing the night before. Those tickets are live too as well. It's limited seating. So if it's something that you're interested in, get over to Eventbrite. Just search Midnight Soul in Columbus. It'll come up and I'll let you know if there's still tickets or if you can get on the wait list or whatever. You can follow us too as well at Spoon Mob. We're on all the other social medias, but mainly the Instagram is what you want to follow. It's where we post all our podcast uh, updates as they get released and different food photos from places that we're eating and everything. So at Spoon Mob on Instagram. You can find us and everything else. It's either at Spoon Mob or Spoon Mob One, 
Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, all that stuff. But I like pictures way more than video. So the video component, we really don't do too much with right now. Maybe we'll, once we get some time, we'll explore some stuff there. A few ideas trickling around, but nothing that I'm super excited uh, about taking on. Just video editing is this whole other beast. So podcasts usually release on Thursdays at 1 a.m. for all our third shifters who are either getting out of kitchens, they just got done cleaning for the night, or nurses or anybody who works third shift. I've worked third shift. It sucks. So having something to listen to on your drive home when you're like wide awake or to help keep you awake if you're super tired and you're driving home, you know, having that audio in the background can really help make it to your destination. So that's why I kind of wanted to release them at 1 a.m. for all those people. So you could find us on all major podcast platforms, you know, Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon Music, Stitcher, any of the smaller players for Androids or stuff like that. We're on all of them. If there's something that you use that you don't see us on there for some reason and you search Spoon Mob and nothing comes up, hit me up, let us know. Um, we'll take a look at it, but we should be on everything except for Pandora. Uh, for some reason, Pandora will not let us on there. Um, we've gone through the process like three times. I don't know what their issue is, but and so make sure to follow the podcast so you get all the new episodes. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel. We put all the episodes up there a week after they come out on all the podcast apps. So if you prefer YouTube, as some people do, especially those that work from home, all the episodes are up there. You can listen to those. Um, you're just a week behind everybody else. Uh, we put a still image of the cover art over and uh, lay the audio in the background. So got that idea from Bill Burr. Uh, that's kind of how he does his stuff. And it just kind of makes sense because, again, I really don't want to take on any video editing responsibilities right now. And I don't really know who would watch it um, if we had video. It's just kind of it's this whole separate thing, um, almost like if you if you start doing video and it becomes like a TV show or whatever. So that is it for this week. Again, appreciate everybody listening. Appreciate Ray, Jay, and Matt all coming on the podcast and just shooting the shit and talking about Bincho Boys and stuff they got in the works and life events and all that stuff. So it was cool to have everybody on and we'll have them on. Uh, I'm sure all of them again. I would definitely want to get Ray on, talk about Koso because it's an awesome place. Uh, kind of talk about the backstory, his career and everything and Korean food. So uh, we'll get him on at some point. Um, you know, I think he was a little... Maybe a little apprehensive to come on, but then, uh, you know, as you could tell, he loosened up and uh, broke a whole bunch of news uh, with what's going on in the East Market, which is not our intended goal, but it was great to have. So make sure to check all those guys out. We appreciate everybody listening, and we will talk to you guys later.